Hey guys, Trent at Black Horse Ranch coming to you from the crawl space. Newly excavated crawl space. We finished that yesterday and we're ready to get started on the forms. That's what we're gonna be working on today to pour our footings. Today, we had a little bit of rain last night. You can see a little bit of puddles there. But the big weather that we're worried about is going into tonight and tomorrow. We're supposed to have up to 20 to 25 mile an hour winds. And they're directly from the north which is straight behind me, which is the best possible scenario. Uh, but if you're the praying kind of person, we would really appreciate your prayers and uh, help us to uh, make sure this thing doesn't go tumbling down into the hole. If, if the barn comes down, I think our only option is to take it apart and rebuild it. Today we're gonna be working on forms and I wanted to show you this new product that I've researched and uh, just newly discovered. So this is called Fast Foot. It's a fabric form and it's used for footings, stem walls, big slab pours, um, but it's basically a fabric. And um, you set up your forms along the top edge of your footing and then the fabric uh, is like a little pouch that holds the concrete. And uh, it's supposed to be a green building practice. Uh, saved quite a bit of money on forms. And it should be faster. So we're going to give that a try. Never used it before. Um, should be fun. Should be an interesting experience. So we're going to get going with this today. And I uh, hope you join us. All right, guys. Since this is a two-story building, uh, the foundation requirements are 8-inch thick footing by 16 inches wide and so we're going to do that around the whole perimeter and on the end walls that carry the load of the roof um, since we're doing a drop floor system i'm actually going to make the footing four inches wider to accommodate for our insulation uh, on the interior of the stem wall and then also um, a place for the supports to carry the drop floor to sit on those uh, footings um, so that's what we're going to get going with. We're going to take the building envelope size and we're going to add four inches to it and that'll be the perimeter. We'll shoot it with a laser, we'll get it set, and then we'll do the interior. And then we've also got two footings to carry pony walls that go down the middle uh, that run parallel to our bearing walls. So total we'll have a perimeter and we'll have two footings down the middle and that'll be what we're working on today. So we'll do the perimeter board first, and then we will do our offset interior boards and our two footings in the middle, and then we'll put our fabric in. Let's get going. So we've got the first board put up and it's uh, straight with the string line. So what I did is I dropped a plumb bob from each corner. This one's right on the corner. And then we've got four inches. We got four inches from the string to the board. So that's the outside of the form. So with the eight inch stem wall, 16 inches leaves you four inches on either side. But on the inside, we're gonna actually have six inches. The string line was to get it straight, and again, this is the footing, so it's not super critical how straight it is, but we're pretty good. 
So we'll keep going. My uh, roll of string is over here, so I'm gonna do this wall next. We're back in the crawl space. Yesterday was our high wind day, uh, so we didn't work. It was about 20 mile an hour winds that we had uh, for most of the day. It was between 15 to 20 mile an hour winds yesterday. But as you can see, everything is still in good order. So 
we didn't want to risk anyone getting crushed in here yesterday, so we stayed out and uh, let the wind do its thing. Now we're back, and we got to finish the footing forms, and we'll be pouring concrete on Monday. Doing the forms is a little bit harder by yourself, but the kids are at school, so I'm uh, getting these last ones set, and then we've got to, uh, the top of these is set, some places it's about six inches, and we need the footing to be um, eight inches minimum, so I'm gonna come back through and add a two inch piece to the top, and uh, you don't have to do that. That was just, I took my first, when I was checking around, I didn't check the lowest spots apparently, and so what I thought was a good average actually ended up being low in most places, or you know, uh, too, setting the forms too low, so, but not a big deal. We got a bunch of scrap wood from when we did, did the demolition before, so uh, the boys have already ripped a bunch of two inch pieces for me. And we'll just come back through and lay them on the top. Then after that, we're gonna put in our fast foot fabric. And uh, the boys have already been working on the rebar as well, so we'll get that laid in the fabric. Um, then we'll tie the forms together and put our, our verticals in. And uh, that should wrap us up for getting the forms ready to pour. So we'll keep working. All right guys, so the forms have been extended and nailed and uh, we are all done with the forms. So the next thing will be to start laying out our fabric and getting that put in there and then uh, the rebar and the, the uh, ties across the top. That's it, it's looking good, it's coming along. We'll see you after lunch. Hey guys, so we've started laying our fabric down in our footings and uh, we're just figuring all that out. It's the first time we've done it. Things are going pretty good. So we'll keep going on that. And uh, you guys can watch as we do that. And then we'll start laying the rebar in and uh, start putting our ties in.
Hey guys, coming to you from the crawl space here again. So we've got most of the stem wall forms put up. We poured the footing. And I wanted to just chat about some dramas that we've had with the concrete. And as you know, we're pouring in freezing weather. And that brings some challenges in and of itself. And uh, you can see behind me there that we've also gotten about six inches of snow. And uh, we've got about another three inches, maybe more expected tomorrow. So uh, we're trying to get this all wrapped up and uh, supported. We've got um, two of the four walls uh, braced and uh, we got two more to do today and then we'll do the interior forms. Um, but just wanted to talk a little bit about the concrete issues that we've had. So I've shown you in uh, previous videos that we use this fast foot uh, fabric forming system uh, to go inside of our forms. And that worked great. Um, you don't have to wet the forms. Stripping the forms is, is good, even if you don't want the vapor barrier component to it. Um, it worked great, so glad we did that. We've got here, so this was the corner where I was testing every so often. If you've poured concrete in cold weather before, or if you have you know a little bit of building experience, you'll know that you can't just, uh, your concrete can't freeze. And a common thing that's done um, to help the concrete cure faster and get past that delicate freezing point is uh, an accelerator. So Monday morning came, it was time for our pour. Uh, we were scheduled to pour at nine. And uh, I had a bunch of people up here to help with the pour. And um, 10 after nine rolls around, no concrete truck. So I call the concrete company and uh, they, they informed me that their gravel crushing equipment had broken over the weekend and they were trying to get gravel from uh, another source, you know, like an hour away and they hadn't gotten gravel yet and uh, I was on the list to call. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how that really works. But anyway, I didn't get called. I had to call them. Um, so we ended up, instead of pouring at 9 in the morning, uh, we poured at 3.30 in the afternoon, which puts us a lot closer to that freezing point. Um, so we had to blanket the concrete, you know, faster. I wanted to let it set for a while and observe it. So not to mention that, but before we started pouring, um, I also talked to the concrete cr truck driver and I said, so we have the accelerator added, right? And uh, he said, yep. So I was like, great. So we poured and... Uh, I thought it looked very wet for a very long time. Um, it was, uh, wasn't was setting very fast. And so I've never poured in freezing before. I've been around it. I've read a lot about it, uh, but I've never actually done a pour when it's been cold. So um, we, I didn't really know what concrete with accelerator looked like. It seemed like it, it wasn't uh, any faster, but you know, it could have been just because of the freezing temperatures. Um, but come to find out, uh, talked to the owner of the concrete company and, uh, they didn't add accelerator because they didn't have any, they ran out. So, um, that's not, uh, that doesn't kill the concrete, um, but it makes it so you can't do anything else with it for probably twice the amount of time, um, that, you know, to, to start forming on top of it or uh, getting your uprights straightened or anything like that. You can't really do anything with it because it's way too soft. So there's a couple spots. I tried some things. <clears throat> this is the main corner here that I started showing you. And we have these clips to hold the bottom forms. And you can't see this very well on camera. But this is the first place I tried to shoot a nail in with a powder actuated um, device. And it basically sunk into the concrete about a half inch and folded it in half. And then I just pulled it right out like butter. And so I uh, waited another day and we've got, here's one of the powder actuated nails and you can see it bent the clip again and sunk in. Um, and I think I could have pulled that one out as well. And one thing that I learned when I was uh, in high school, when I first started working construction, was you can actually, if the concrete is green enough, you can actually drive regular 16 penny nails in it, framing nails into the concrete to hold your 
your forms for your wall. And at the time when I was told that, um, our concrete had cured too fast and uh, there was no possible way we were driving nails into it. But I gave that a try here on this one after I shot that with the powder actuated gun. And uh, lo and behold, that worked great. Um, you get a few like this where you hit a piece of aggregate and that nail's not going in any further, but that clip doesn't move. So those, those nails held good enough and I uh, got one pretty much all the way in, but those will be good, um, plenty good to hold the forms in. Uh, but most, for most of them, we got the nails all the way in and uh, I did at least two nails per clip. So that's our, conc that's our concrete drama that we had on the footing. Um, so needless to say, I've got a different company, concrete company scheduled. Uh, we're pouring uh, this coming Monday, so in two days. And uh, we've got a pump truck. So when we poured the footing, we didn't have any snow and the, the truck was able to drive out here no problem. Um, but uh, we had a lot of warmer temperatures. We got six inches of snow. So I thought the ground probably wouldn't hold a 70,000 pound truck with nine and a half yards of concrete in it. And so uh, we're gonna do a pump truck and I've never done that either. Of course, I've been around it and I've seen it done lots of times, but I've never actually done a pour with a pump truck. So, um, that's another learning experience for us on this one. So today, uh, the kids are getting ready to come out, so I just thought I'd shoot this video real quick. Um, we'll, we'll go out and give you a quick peek of the bracing that we've done so far on the outer walls. And uh, then we've got two walls to brace. And uh, we've got one row of our rebar tied around the perimeter. And uh, we got one more row to tie, and that will actually tie to the, the uh, anchor bolts that stick out the top. So um, those will be our two runs of rebar. And uh, the inner form should go pretty quickly since we're working in here. Uh, working outside was kind of hard because we had to do everything from inside. And uh, you can see this wall still needs to get straightened and braced. But leaning over and, and uh, getting the bracing done on the outside was pretty hard, you know, and we knocked our heads a few times on these studs hanging down. But we've got the back wall and this other side done. So you can see that a little bit better. Nice and straight. And we've got our bracing out there double state good and solid so we've done that wall and then that side wall over there so we have to do the front and uh, this other side and we'll be ready to rip and uh, a couple of the other things we had to do to prep our uh, get our utilities through the foundation wall now this one is the sewer line uh, connected to the septic and we're super close here you can see the clip I'm gonna have to cut this shorter to get the form in there um, but it's kind of unfortunate that's that's where it was and uh, I could have moved it earlier probably with a bit more digging but we did dig it out and I did get it bent in a little bit um, so no, we'll just have to see I'm I'm pretty sure we can work with that uh, we'll get it brought back out here into the middle after, you know, we'll get an elbow on there and get it bent back out into the, the open areas here. And then we also had the electrical coming in. And that used to come up the outside wall. And then it went through the outside wall into a junction box and then into the panel. But we're moving the panel, and I don't like having PVC conduit out especially on the south side here in idaho with the sun it just destroys it so we elected to go underground and now i've put this foam around the the pipes that pass through uh, because you have expansion and contraction even with concrete and the piping and everything and so you don't want any crushing or cracking uh, due to that so um, we've got foam wrapped around the pipe for the penetration uh, to help seal it and then also just to give that expansion capability 
And then the water line, uh, we were actually able to run underneath the footing. And so we'll tie into that when the time comes. So we'll be back uh, with another update and uh, we'll keep working on this, but thanks for watching.